Hi, it's me again. I know you're probably not excited to see me, but that's okay. I'm excited to see you. So today we're going to do the last set of notes for this unit. It's on continental drift. Remember we discussed it some with Wegener and Harry Hess, and we're going to do that again today. So today you're going to learn a little more in detail. You want to know who Alfred Wegener is. Who is that crazy man? We're going to learn some history that supports this continental drift theory, okay? And we're going to learn what causes these continents to move. So keep those things in mind. Let's get going. So meet Alfred Wegener. He's old. I know, right? So this dude proposed the continental drift theory, which is the idea that Earth's continents moved away from this big single continent called Pangaea. So he didn't know how they moved, but he knew they did. So he had a lot of fossil evidence and a lot of rock evidence, but most scientists went, nope, because here's the thing you're going to learn as you go through this class. Scientists do not like being proven wrong, and they don't like change. So obviously he was going to prove some people wrong, and he was going to make change, and everybody was like, nope. Not doing it. But then they come back like 50 years later and go, oh man, that dude was right. You'll see that again later in this year with, with uh, Mendel. So, like we said, he couldn't explain how they moved. He was like, I know they do, but how? I don't know. But it was not until about the 1960s that people went, hmm, this guy was on to something. And he was already dead, but they figured it out. So, you might want to look this up. How many years passed between Wagner's death and the time his theory was proven correct? Or actually, look it up. You can see it on the screen. I'm having a moment. About 30 years, a long time, man. Let's go about Pangea. It was a supercontinent, okay? It looks like that. Crazy, huh? It began to break apart about 175 million years ago. Dang. And there were probably other supercontinents before that one. More, less of probably, and if you look it up, there are literally maps and evidences that break down what each continent looked like before Pangea. This is just the most recent one, okay? They've been continually breaking apart and coming together. If you're interested in what the other continents may look like, or supercontinents may look like, have a look at it. It's kind of cool. So let's talk about Laura Asia and Gon... I'm going to screw this up. Here we go. Gondwana land. Yay! So Gondwana land and Laura Asia separated from each other about 200 to 180 million years ago. This is before Pangaea, by the way. Um, this roughly formed about the northern and southern, southern hemispheres. Do y'all think the United think about this to yourself? Do you think the United States would have been in Laurasia Asia or Gone Wanda Land? Or Gone Gondawana Land. Good job, Mr. Hart. You said Laurasia? Asia? You are correct. So, here's what they were named from. I'm not going to go into this in depth because that might give you pain. So here's the evidence that he used to support it. He gave four types, which is kind of cool. He said that he had fossil evidence. He had he showed that the continents could fit together. He had glacial evidence, and he had landforms and rock layers. So this dude had some stuff, kind of like when you support your papers, you write. He had some supporting stuff. Let's talk about it. So he had fossil evidence. He found fossils of the same species on separate continents and nowhere else in the world, okay? These plants and animals would have to do one of two things. They would have to evolve independently, which ain't happening if they're that similar, folks. Just know that, okay? Or swim the distances. And I just think about it. An animal is not going to swim from South America all the way to Africa, how it is today. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think you could make it. I know I could. Also, the fossils didn't fit the climate. Like, you find a palm tree leaf fossil in Alaska. Alaska's cold. Palm trees would straight up die there. And look at this map. You can see this Glossopteris guy here, right here, at this farm. How many continents was he on? Look at this. He was on every single continent. He was in Antarctica and South Africa. Think about those climates today. These two are what? They're hot. And this is really cold. So you're telling me that fern lived in hot and cold? Oh, no. Continental fit. So you can put them together. Like You can fit the continents together almost like a puzzle. Look at that. Like You can see here where these kind of all match up like a puzzle. It's cool. And there was another piece of evidence they were once joined. And this is another piece of evidence they were once joined. Take a second if you want. You can pause and see if you can fit any of the other continents together. Just for fun. I'm going to skip for it. So glacial evidence. So glacial deposits formed like 300 million years ago, and these have been found in Antarctica, Africa, South America, India, and Asia, and Australia, I mean. So these striations, these big scratches on rocks here, you, you can see them. These show how the ice flowed from the glaciers and came from a single point, okay? And evidence of glaciers, like these striations, have been found in warm climates today. So it shows that those places must have been cold once or something, you know? Also landforms and rock layers. So the Appalachian Mountains here, these match well with these up here on the British Isles and with the other continents. And also these coal fields you can find in North America and Europe. 
match up, which is kind of cool because they're completely across the world from each other. But they match up. Dun, dun, dun. So, here's another thing you can do if you want to pause. So, let's talk. You don't, you don't have to worry about Dr. Hess's ship. He joined the Navy and was on a ship, and he would measure the ocean floor with that ship when he was in the Navy. Last thing, plate tectonics. So this is proposed by Harry Hess in the 1960s. It explained how the continents moved. So he linked, he, he was the missing link. It showed that Earth's crust is broken into sections called plates, of which are moved by convection currents in the mantle. And this additional evidence showed scientists that, wait a minute, that Wegner guy might have been right. We should have listened to him. So give your best answer to these. You can think about this on your own. Who was Alfred Wegener? Who was this crazy dude? What historical evidence do we have that you learned today that supports this theory? And what causes the movement of those continents? Take those and answer them on your own and think about think through them. I uh, hope you learned something from this. If you need more help, let me know. I hope you guys have a great day.